Hello everyone, welcome to Go VM Lab VMware tutorial series for beginners, lecture number 63. How to create vCenter server roles and permissions. Now, let's understand vCenter server permissions model. vCenter single sign on supports authentication, which means it determines whether a user can log into vSphere components at all. Each user must be authorized to view or manipulate vSphere objects. vCenter server allows fine grain control over authorization with rules and permissions. So vCenter server permission models gives us a role based access control kind of capabilities to secure our vCenter server inventory objects. Now, as you could see that in this particular diagram, we do we we do have vSphere objects as you could see that now what these vSphere objects could be it could be your virtual machine it could be your ESXi host vCenter server data center cluster or any other vSphere objects such as data store or maybe a networking objects that's it, that falls into vSphere objects category now we have a something called role like for traditionally any role based access control implementation vmware has also provided a very set of uh, a default kind of roles such as virtual machine administrator network administrator data store administrator and maybe a couple of sample roles which can be leveraged as a as a role based access control now what these roles are made up of these roles are made up of couple of privileges so we define couple of privileges maybe for example if you are creating a role as a virtual machine administrator now as a virtual machine administrator we would not want that administrator to go and modify our network configurations so we gonna give him privileges which are very specific to virtual machine such as powering on powering off creating a snapshot of that virtual machine or doing anything and everything around that virtual machine so that's how we define a set of privileges within that particular role and the last but not least what do we have it we have a user or group obviously when we are creating these roles we need to associate or we need to bind these roles to a set of users we might have in our organization we might have a few users which could be l1 users few users could be l3 users and then basically we actually categorize categorize a, a set of users in our predefined groups and then we assign those roles to those groups and that's where that's how we maintain the complete role based access control in our vSphere environment. So the, this is a, a very basic fundamental vCenter server permissions model. Now let's go and log into our vCenter server and let's try to implement this permission model from the vSphere UI. As you could see that I am logged into our vCenter server savcsa01.govmlab.local. Now let's go and browse our vCenter inventory. So you do see that we have a data center created as SA data center. Let's go and browse our data center. Within that data center, you might have seen that we have a cluster created as SA hyphen cluster. And we also have a one standalone ESXi host SA ESXi 05 added to our SA data center. Now let's go and browse our cluster inventory. So within that cluster, you do see that we have created two node cluster and we do have a two VMs which are running on that cluster. Let's go and browse our standalone ESXi host and we do see that we have a test VM01 which is running on our SA ESXi 05 host. So that's the overview of our vSphere data center host and virtual machines. Now, the first thing what we need to do, let's go and browse some of the default roles what VMware has provided for us. So to do that, click on menu, click on administration and click on roles. So you do see that we have under access control. We do see have an option called roles. Now click on that roles and we do see there are bunch of roles predefined predefined roles have been already provided by VMware. Now let's go and have a look at these predefined default roles provided by VMware. Now one of the role is basically we know that it's administrator which clearly says that a full access 
writes, which means that this is our super user, a very well known uh, a user administrator. You can also see that the usage, so which all the, the users are having this particular, utilizing this particular role and look at the privileges. So if you look at the privileges, you do see that what all the privileges are being as mapped to this particular administrator role because it's a super user. Uh, it's our topmost uh, user administrator. So you do see that it has access to every single object of our vSphere inventory and it will have access to every single privileges. For example, alarms. So we have uh, alarms where it can go create alarms. Then it also has a permissions where it can do all those permissions thing. Then you just scroll down. You will do, you will do see that from the content library perspective, it can create all the content library related operations. DB port group, it could do everything from the DB port group, distributed switch and so on and so forth. So you can just check it out this entire list of the privileges, what this administrator role is having it. Now let's go and check it out some sample rules what VMware has provided to us. For example, let's scroll down and we do see that there is a virtual machine user. So that's a one virtual machine sample user and you might have seen that what is the description of this particular role? It provides virtual machine interaction permissions. That's the scope of this particular role. Now let's see that who is using it. As you could see that this particular role is not being used by any of the user in our vSphere environment as of now. Now let's look at the privileges and look at that. It has a very limited set of privileges access global where it has access to cancel task, which means any task it has a access. It has a privilege to cancel that task. It can also schedule the task. It can create task, modify task, remove the task. And from the virtual machine perspective, look at that. What options this particular user is having it. It can power off the VM. It can power on the VM. It can reset, suspend the VM. It can actually attach a CD DVD media, but it, it cannot create a snapshot. As you could see that it does not have a capability. This user does not have a capability to create a snapshot of a virtual machine. It does not have a capability to, to perform any virtual machine power user kind of operations. Now let's go and check it out. A different user what VMware has created is power user. Now look at that. Now this power user would be having this the same permissions what our interaction the, the, the normal user was having it what we have seen just now. But other than that, if you see that it has a bunch of other permissions as well. Other than interaction, if you see that it has a snapshot management permissions, that's the power user where it can create snapshot. It can remove, rename and revert to snapshot and not only snapshot. It also has capability to change the virtual machine configuration as you do see that it can add disk. It can remove the disk. It can change the CPU configuration memory configuration. So that's the the role or privileges which have been assigned to a power user, which means that power user will have a little bit more privileges than your a virtual machine user. Now let's check out. Let's check it out uh, other roles. For example, let's check it out. Maybe your data network administrator, for example. Now let's click on the network administrator. So what is the description? It says that it is assigned to networks to allow association of virtual machine or host with networks. As we all know that network administrator would be doing the operations which is required for our virtual machine and host to enable or to participate in virtual machine networking or vSphere networking. So all those networking related privileges will be falling under network administrator role and that's what this description tells us very clearly. Click on the usage as you do see that as of now there is no use no user have been assigned this particular rules and privileges. Now let's understand as a network administrator what all privileges have been mapped to this particular network administrator role. So click on privileges and look at that. It just have a assigned network. What does that mean? It means that this network administrator can only assign network to our virtual machines or it can assign network to our ESXi host, but it does not have a privileges to create a switch, create a port groups, create a teaming configuration, changing policy configuration. Those privileges are not being 
assigned to this network administrator role. Let's look at one more user. So let's check it out our data store consumer. As you do see that data store consumer, it's again a user who would be having just a space allocation. It can just allocate space to our data store. Now, the last role, as you could see that the read only role, which does not have any privilege assigned to it. Because when we say a user in the read only mode, which means that it can only read any of the objects. It can just read this configurations, but it will not have privileges to go and modify any of the required set of any of the configuration, like maybe a virtual machine configuration, network configuration, maybe storage configuration. So that's a read only user, which will just have a read only access to the entire vSphere environment. So these are, uh, as you could see that there are a bunch of uh, uh, rules which have been provided by VMware. So either you can leverage these existing roles without creating a new rules, but most of the time in our environment, we always want to have a fine tuned control of our roles and permissions. And that's where basically we actually go and create our custom roles with our own custom privileges based on our own environment, based on our own requirement. So let's go and understand how do we go and create our own custom role with our own custom set of privileges. So to do that, first of all, we need to uh, select the SSO domain. So as you could see that as of now, we are just going with our a default SSO domain, which is our vSphere.local. Now here we have a plus sign. So either you can create this plus sign or there is also option for clone role action. Now clone role action is a, is, is a very simple thing. For example, let's say there is a network administrator or maybe there could be, let's take an example of maybe a virtual machine user, for example. Now, if you could see that this virtual machine user has a, a very minimal set of access to the configurations. What if I want to assign this particular user, not only virtual machine interaction kind of privileges, but I also want to assign a snapshot related operational accessibility, but I don't want to assign this user to add, create or remove your hard drives or any of the storage or network devices. That's the reason though VMware has given me the power user privileges, a power user role, but I don't want these per set of permissions to be aligned, aligned or to be assigned to my new user. That's where basically I am going to use this particular user as a template, as a reference role, and then I'm going to add my own custom privileges based on my requirement. So the, the one thing is basically you can always click on this plus sign and then basically you can browse through every single inventory. For example, if I just select virtual machine. So if you just select virtual machine, you can always select that which particular rules you want to assign to that particular user. But instead of doing that, the, the simplest way of doing it is basically select this rule, click on clone rule. And now what we're going to do, we're going to say that it's a go VM lab level two engineer virtual machine user. So what we are saying that that's an organization name go VM lab. It's a L2 engineer and for the virtual machine operations basically. So what we can say that description, this user will have minimal access to virtual machine objects or virtual machine operations, but will also have snapshot management capabilities. Click on OK. Now, as you could see that, you will see that a new role has been created successfully. So you do see that now we got a new role. That's a custom role. What we have created go VM lab level two engineer virtual machine user. Now, as we know that this particular user has been cloned from a virtual machine sample user. So it will have the as of now, it will have the exact same set of privileges privileges. So let's go and verify that. So click on the description, select that user, click on the description and you do see that 
this is the same description what we have provided this user will have minimal access to virtual machine operations but will also have snapshot management capabilities now did we assign this role to any of the user we have not done that as of now that's the reason there is no user which is being mapped to this particular role now look at that privileges now if you notice that this particular role has the same set of privileges what this virtual machine user role was having it the role which we have used it for the cloning purpose so now let's go and add a new more few more new privileges a custom privileges which we want to assign to this particular custom role to do that select that role click on this edit button and now you for example let's say we're talking about snapshot so click on virtual machines and within that virtual machine you do see that here we have a change configurations so now scroll down and you might be seeing option for snapshot management so click on this snapshot management and all the snapshot related operations will be selected for this particular user now if you want to add few more few more things to this particular user for example let's say i don't want to give only the snapshot thing but i also want to give provisioning access now within that provisioning access i just want to allow him the clone virtual machine or maybe a clone template kind of thing right so you do see that we just selected these two rules which actually gives us not only the snapshot privileges but also a cloning privileges but for our understanding let's not select this particular option click on next that's the user role name what we have created click on finish now as soon as we finish click on that role and now you will see that this particular role is also having a snapshot management capabilities which means that now we have created a, a new role which actually gives us a virtual machine interaction capabilities but also it also gives us a snapshot management capabilities to those user which actually gonna be a part of this particular role the next thing what we need to do we actually need to create a user and then we need to bind this user to this particular role so stay tuned for our next lecture in the next lecture we are going to go and create a user we are going to create a group as well and then we're going to bind this custom role to that user and then we will validate that what all set of permissions or what all kind of operations that user can perform in our vSphere environment we hope you enjoyed this lecture thanks for your time please like share and subscribe to our youtube channel thank you